repentance for them in Jesus' name. We bless you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. the Lord. We want to give time for questions. Please, if you have a question, so you can be more clear with the topic of this morning, can you please just raise up your hand? And you may need to stand up so that we can see you. You are standing up. Can you come to the front? You are raising up your hand. Let's have you, brother, here. Good morning, sirs. Sir, Good there morning. is some, there is where I'm still confused over the issue of uh, leprosy. And when you said leprosy is a symptom of sin, and when somebody contacted or somebody had that disease, then you are separating that person from a man who have not committed any sin. How possible that somebody that committed that, that have that thing, have that leprosy? Or somebody that have not committed sin will contact leprosy from somebody that committed sin. That is the way I don't understand. Okay, thanks. There appears to be no other question. So we will... Uh provide an answer for our dear brother. Well, we need to understand the purpose behind the instructions and commandments that God gives to us. God gives us commandment because he loves us. And when you have that at your mind, you will not find it difficult to obey whatever instruction that God is passing to us. And he passes the instruction to through his appointed leader. Like in this case, the instruction was given to Moses and Aaron to enforce certain rules and regulations to ensure that disease doesn't spread um, in the camp. So there's no uh, epidemic uh, so that the health of the people can be protected. So God has an overall uh, reason why we get the things that he asks us to do from time to time. If you turn your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 13, from verse 1, the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scar, or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then it shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the, the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when they hear, in the plague is turned white, and the plague inside be deeper than the skin of his flesh. It is a plague of leprosy, and the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. And so why do we have the priest now pronouncing him unclean? Because it's likely to pass that leprosy to other people. In fact, you, 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 you hear the word of unclean, unclean in the three chapters that we have read. In chapter 13, unclean appears 18 times. Chapter 14, 6 times. And chapter 15, 35 times. In a chapter of just 33 verses. So God has an overall reason. And until we see that reason, sometimes we may not understand. If you come to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 7, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7. For what nation is there so great who has God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? For what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgment 
so righteous in all this law which I set before you this day. Verse 9. Only take it to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, unless they depart from thy heart all days of thy life. For teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. And so the law have righteous laws and commandments. And we need to understand why the righteous laws and commandments were passed on to us. In the same Deuteronomy chapter 23, I read verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 14. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy that the sin of clean thing in thee and turn away from thee. When you read the entire the book of uh, Deuteronomy, uh, of uh, Leviticus, Leviticus is one of the the package that is referred to as the Pentateuch. We have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the central message in Leviticus is about sanctification. And sanctification has two parts. Separation that you have to do yourself, to separate yourself from sin after you have been converted. After you have been converted. You separate yourself from things that are likely to take you back that journey that you have left. And then God himself now has his own role to remove the Adamic nature, the nature of sin, the body of sin, which will necessarily be destroyed so that you will be able to serve the law with an exalted law, with real love, with real appreciation for who he is, being our God, and for the intentions that he has for us. The overall message of Leviticus is sanctification. The book communicates that receiving God's forgiveness and acceptance should be followed by holy living, not just for the ordained priests of the tabernacle, but for all the people of God to distinguish them from other hidden nations around them. And that's the, the reason for the sep separation. If you come to Leviticus chapter 11, Leviticus chapter 11, I read verse 44. Leviticus chapter 11, 44. For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, set apart, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defy yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. So this is the over, overall, the central message of the book of Leviticus. It's chapter 20, verse 7. Leviticus chapter 20. I read verse 7. Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctifies you. And so that is the reason why we are to respond to the commands of God. And our brother is asking, how do, you, how do we uh, link the, the case of leprosy to that of a sinner? We need to understand, first of all, that leprosy is a contagious and communicable disease. And um, because it is a contagious disease, the Lord has commanded in his word that such people under that dispensation should be removed from the society so that the others in the close camp where they were in the wilderness will not contact that disease. It's just like the case of COVID-19. When we had COVID-19, we had isolation. We had isolation centers, we had quarantine centers, and eventually, when the COVID-19 became so spread, the whole cities were shut down. And we couldn't, during those times, have services the way we are having it now. We had to have uh, social distancing. And that is what happens to a sinner. When a sinner is living in sin, sin is like a, a level. It spreads. You know, we had our, our Father in the Lord teaching us 
one, uh, during one of the Sunday services about how sin is very, very dangerous and how the leader's sin is actually a leading sin. And so when sin comes, then we have to make sure that we do not imbibe the activity and the practices of those sinners. We have to be separated. The same um, Bible in the New Testament tells us in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, let's read from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, let's read from verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelly savor, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Verse 5, for this ye know, that no warm monger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of, of God. And so, the same way the sinners, the, lep the leprous person is removed from the camp, he said, in fact, when you sin, you are removed from the camp already. Sin separates you from God. If you come to Romans chapter 6, let's come to Romans, let's first of all read chapter 3. And um, in verse 23. So for all have sinned, and what happens after that, and come short of the glory of God. They may not identify you. People may not know what you are doing. But the moment you go into sin, you're already separated from the, the, the glory of God, the presence of God. That's why we have to make sure that we hate sin with perfect hatred. Nobody should play with sin. It becomes our purpose in life to separate ourselves clearly from everything sinful. It becomes a pattern. If you come to um, the, the Psalms now, you come to Psalm 45. Come to Psalm 45 and in verse 7. Psalm 45, verse 7. It's not just something that you live your life, you manage your life in such a way that uh, I don't want people to know what I'm doing. Well, you know that the presence of God is there. And when you become born again and the seed of God is in you, 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 you hate sin with a passion. In Psalm 45, let's read verse 5. Let's read verse 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest what? Wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So, we are to hate sin passionately. In fact, that is one of the rules and responsibilities that has been given to us as ministers of the gospel to ensure that we do not uh, uh, lead in such a way that the, the church begins to slide into sin. In Ephesians chapter, chapter 4 and verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the divine of the body of Christ. See, we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of what? The fullness of God. And so, sin has to be dealt with, and if, if uh, it becomes necessary, the sinner will be placed on discipline so that others will learn. If you come to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, know ye not 
that your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by what? And by the Spirit of God. Now, under the New Testament, we see that the, the, the covenant moved beyond isolation. We see so much isolation, isolation in the Old Testament. But under the New Testament, Jesus actually attended to those who need attention. Somebody has sinned. Of course, when, this, uh, when a sin is rebuked, then eventually we need to come back to that person and follow him up and actually show him the word of God so that such a person can be restored back onto fellowship. The priests in the Old Testament, they isolated the leper. But under the New Testament, there's a power of God to heal. Say amen. If you go to Mark chapter 1 and in verse 40, Mark chapter 1, I read there in uh, verse 40, Mark chapter 1, verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. So, we don't, the Bible even says that somebody who has been constantly rebuked, constantly corrected, and continues in sin, he says such a person, we are not able to eat with him. Because they, of, the, of the kind of resolve in his mind to continue in sin. But then, the Lord says, we need to also follow up and make sure that those who need restoration are restored. Before we conclude, let's look at Matthew chapter 9 and in verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but labors are, are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So as we correct sin, then on the other hand also we go to reconcile. We go to follow up. We go to have compassion on them so that by the grace of God they will restore it to the kingdom. And God will do it in Jesus' name. We rise up now to pray. have seen how dangerous leprosy was at that time. And we have seen the need for isolation in the interests of the people. We have also seen how we can restore sinners back into the fold. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that we have heard this morning. We ask you that the truth of scripture that you have passed across to us will guide and control our lives all the days of our lives here on earth in Jesus' name. Help us not to play with your word. Help us to run away from everything that can disappoint us and prevent us from seeing you at last in glory in Jesus' name. We have this service before us today. We ask that it will be a time of impartation, a time when you give us guidance to our Father and the Lord and everything you are telling us, all that you are commanding us today, we shall do and be obedient in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.
There's a saving power, for it washes white and make me clean. I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean.
when she arrives as she sings our congressional song. God sings our song 158, 158. Once again, the gospel message from the Savior you have heard. Will you hear the invitation? Will you turn and seek the Lord? Many summers you have waited, ripened harvests you have seen, winter snows that spring have melted, yet you linger in your sin. Jesus for your choice is waiting, calling out at one key side. While the Spirit now is striving, you will seek the Savior's side. Cease your business to be drinking, you no longer try to fill. It is thirsting and not filling that will give the Spirit fill. Let your will to God be given, such in Christ's atoning blood. Look to Jesus, now in heaven, rest on his changing realm. Come believing, come believing. Come to Jesus, look and live. Come believing, come believing. Come to Jesus, live 